right, thank you everybody for sticking around, especially since I know I'm competing up against the United States versus Germany in soccer, and so uh, thank you all for being security fans even more than you might be uh, soccer or football fans. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, so I'm Wendy Seltzer, I am a lawyer and technologist, and I am uh, the leader of the technology and society domain at the World Wide Web Consortium, uh, where I focus on privacy and security in web standards and other things under the technology and society banner, including some web payments and some social networks. Um, so today I'm going to be talking um, about uh, trust, and um, we've got um, a basic definition of trust uh, back from 1918 when we were thinking more about uh, people and institutions than about uh, computers. Uh, trust, the assured resting of the mind on the integrity, veracity, justice, friendship, or other sound principle of another person. Confidence, reliance. Uh, and in the context of person to person, uh, person to organization, uh, trust, uh, we usually connect trust up to a particular context and relationship. Uh, so I might trust my doctor to diagnose my illness and to prescribe the right medicines, uh, but not to fly an airplane, and I trust the, the pilot of uh, the plane that flew me here to uh, pilot uh, that plane and land me safely, and then I might trust uh, others more broadly. So my family I might trust to look out for my interests, but uh, not necessarily to have the expertise to, to pilot a plane or uh, diagnose my illnesses. And uh, we uh, sometimes uh, back those trust decisions by law. Uh, we uh, so the, the law of malpractice gives me assurance that uh, the doctor, even if I don't know uh, him or her very well, um, has plenty of other reasons not to uh, pres prescribe dangerous uh, drugs. Um, the, uh, sometimes by social norms, by relationships and uh, sense of uh, familial or uh, duty, uh, or uh, the, the consistency, the ongoing uh, nature of uh, repeat interactions uh, might give reason for trust. Uh, you don't want to be betray somebody whom you'll have to do business with again in the future. Uh, sometimes uh, economics motivates those uh, the relational considerations, uh, and sometimes by structural constraints. So if I uh, know that somebody can only take uh, a few specific actions, um, then uh, I can trust that uh, they, they won't go beyond uh, those. Uh, and so constraints um, can be empowering. Um, the uh, famous example from Greek mythology, uh, Odysseus, when he was uh, sailing past the sirens, uh, whose Song was rumored to be uh, so powerful that uh, every previous ship had been uh, shipwrecked on the island and uh, never escaped, uh, ordered his crew to bind him to the mast of the ship and to stop their ears with wax so they wouldn't hear the song. Uh, and, to, and further, not to uh, unbind him until the ship was safely passed. Um, so no matter how loudly he screamed for them to, to release him, he knew that uh, he was constrained to, uh, and the, the ship could safely get past uh, that obstacle. Uh, so we've got a few different mechanisms then for uh, assuring trust. How well do those uh, work in uh, the computer security uh, environment? Uh, well, um, Ronald Reagan, uh, U.S. president back during the Cold War, uh, liked to repeat a Russian maxim back to uh, his counterparts, uh, trust but verify. He hadn't had lots of reason for uh, believing that uh, his Russian counterparts would keep their promises, um, so he wanted uh, assurances in other means. He wanted to, uh, to learn more about 
what, what they were planning by investigation, by spying even. And uh, so uh, in computer security context, we do audits. Uh, we examine the source code. We invite penetration testing. We uh, look at uh, the, the machinery that we're running on all to verify uh, the, the security uh, of our web environment. Um, but is even that enough? Uh, Ken Thompson in his uh, famous uh, Reflections on Trusting Trust uh, built a backdoored compiler, took uh, standard uh, fully uh, neutral source code, uh, compiled it up through that backdoored compiler, stuck it onto a system, and uh, inserted a backdoor into uh, that uh, ordinary code. And uh, to anyone looking at the code itself, there was nothing wrong. But uh, the, the system itself was uh, vulnerable. So uh, as the environment gets more complex, uh, verification, even by looking at the code and even by looking uh, at uh, many of the underlying components isn't enough uh, to uh, enable trust. Verifiability is hard, um, especially as the web gets uh, more interactive, as uh, we've got Turing complete programming languages all over the place. Uh, it's, we can't build parsers to understand everything that we encounter on the web. Uh, and our code increasingly uh, has uh, side effects that we don't expect. Uh, so the web has changed since, uh, since it began in uh, 1989, uh, when uh, you could visit a static web page and get back some pieces of text, and pretty much expect that the only thing you needed to trust about that web page uh, was uh, the content. If you didn't trust the content, uh, you could verify it elsewhere, or you could just look elsewhere. You know, if you went to a web page and it wasn't, uh, you went to the CERN web page and you didn't find what you were looking for, you could just uh, move on, uh, or call somebody up to ask, "Is that what I uh, was expecting to find in the?" Uh, scientific paper repository. But uh, as web pages get interactive and uh, multimedia and programmable, uh, they now have side effects on your browser and your machine as you ex uh, execute them and uh, view them. Uh, and so you can't be confident that just going to a web page is a safe activity. Uh, you are loading programs. Uh, and unless you've uh, steeled your browser environment with uh, plugins and uh, blockers and all, no script and request policy and uh, other tools to uh, attempt to filter what you're, you're getting in. Uh, you, can't, you don't know what's uh, executing uh, on your machine, and you uh, can't be certain that uh, it's not infiltrating inf data back out, um, whether that's uh, identifying information or uh, more uh, or, or confidential information from uh, your environment. Uh, so how do we deal with these problems? Well, sometimes we deal with security as delegation. We just say, I'm going to delegate uh, that concern to uh, the engineers who designed the web browser, uh, figure that they took care of those problems uh, for me. Um, and most ordinary users of the web uh, do that. They figure. Enough other people are using this, uh, this must be safe, and uh, th that'll work. And it's not because users are stupid. It's not because users are, um, don't know uh, web security. It's, it's a simple matter of cognitive economy. The users uh, figure they know they don't know about security, but there must be other people who have, and they've gotten these web browsers from reputable places, and uh, they're going to visit reputable websites, so they think. Uh, so uh, they'll just trust that they're uh, operating in a, a reasonably safe manner. Uh, so let's get back to uh, trust. How can we? Uh, help users to meet that expectation? How can we produce uh, a web application environment where we can reasonably uh, ask users uh, to trust uh, and 
uh, meet that uh, expectation. And we want to do that while maintaining and preserving the open web platform. The open in that platform is uh, that it is an environment that's open to permissionless innovation, as we like to say, that anyone can build on it and uh, do the unexpected. So we don't want to constrain it so tightly that uh, only applications we already know can be built. Um, yet at the same time, we want to provide uh, some basis for assurance to users that uh, when they uh, venture out into the platform, uh, they won't be uh, bitten. So uh, is it trusted? Is it trustable? Uh, is it trustworthy? Uh, each of those a slightly different spin on uh, what we should expect uh, on, on the web. And if we want to put users first, if we want to uh, first meet their expectations and then meet the expectations of the developers who want uh, a, a powerful programming environment and then of the companies who want to uh, sell things on that environment, how can we make uh, this a meaningful uh, environment? Uh, for trust? And how can we make it trustworthy uh, so that the trust uh, users want to have uh, is warranted? Uh, so I'm going to suggest that we uh, look to uh, the end-to-end -end argument and uh, again, end-to-end uh, -end, uh, says uh, move functions upward in a layered system closer to the application uh, using the function. In other words, we shouldn't need to trust the platform if we can get trustworthy endpoints. If users can uh, anchor trust in uh, particular applications or uh, endpoints on the web, uh, they shouldn't need to trust uh, the entire uh, web platform. But we haven't necessarily uh, done such a great job of that lately. Uh, lots of the places that we have uh, reposed our trust uh, have been uh, misplaced, uh, and I would argue that's in part that we've scoped the trust too broadly. We've trusted uh, people and organizations and systems uh, for much more than we need to, uh, and that means that when they break, they've broken more than they need to. Uh, so a few examples uh, here. Uh, malvertising or uh, adware injections. Uh, this was just one of the latest. Uh, the, the Reuters site uh, appeared to be hacked when uh, the Syrian Electronic Army uh, took over its advertising network, the third-party advertising network that Reuters had trusted to put uh, advertisements into its web pages uh, and was able to redirect browsers to uh, its pages of protest whenever uh, users tried to go to uh, news articles about Syria. Um, so Reuters could have taken more precautions here. It could have uh, vetted its third-party advertising networks uh, more carefully, and done audits of their security uh, to uh, assure that they weren't allowing uh, attackers in through their networks. I could have taken precautions in the coding of its pages to uh, distrust the frames in which advertisements appear, uh, using things like content security policy to block the ads from escaping and uh, gaining control uh, of the browser. But that gets into some tension with what advertisers want, because the advertisers uh, want will pay more for <coughs> Uh, advertising that's rich and interactive and that gets lots of data uh, about the, the user. And uh, even if, uh, so Reuters and the advertising network uh, are negotiating uh, that question, uh, and meanwhile the user uh, has very little choice about any of this uh, in the matter. This is a diagram from uh, generated by Disconnect. Uh, showing all of the third-party requests made by uh, visits to a page uh, on Reuters.com. Uh, so just by going there, the user uh, is subject to information collection and potential uh, information uh, injection from uh, dozens of sites. So the user who reposed trust in Reuters uh, is, uh, is getting all of this 
uh, exposure and uh, doesn't have uh, much choice for the average user beyond uh, trust the whole uh, site or uh, trust nothing at all. Uh, the user, again, could try uh, uh, installing extensions. The disconnect specifically uh, disallows callouts to, to third-party sites. Um, other uh, applications like the Tor browser bundle disable lots of those uh, calls as well to try to protect the user's uh, browsing anonymity. Uh, but the average user uh, is not uh, doing that. Maybe uh, using Adblock, uh, which has the side effect of uh, not performing all of those information calls while it blocks the advertising from uh, showing up in the browser. Uh, so trusting the origin of the, uh, the site you're visiting um, is dangerous. Um, what about trusting communication channels? Um, well, how about uh, DigiNotar, Internet Trust Services? Um, or uh, the, your, your, your web browser uh, trusts probably 100, 200, 300 uh, certificate authorities, uh, most of them uh, companies that uh, you have no individual business relationship with and not necessarily uh, any reason uh, to trust. Uh, until 2011, uh, DigiNotar was one of those. Um, and a certificate authority can issue certificates for uh, any domain on the web. And uh, they're supposed to do some verification uh, under the, uh, the rules of the CA browser forum. They're supposed to verify that uh, the person uh, requesting a certificate for a domain name, uh, for a domain, controls that domain. Um, if they want an uh, extended validity certificate, they're supposed to uh, verify a little bit more about that identity and uh, connection uh, of the requester to it. Uh, but all of these are sort of legal and contractual uh, uh, assertions that uh, the certificate authority is making uh, to the browsers when it's asking, uh, won't you pl put my uh, root key into your certificate store. None of these are promises made to the end user. And um, so when DigiNotar uh, got hacked and uh, was caused to issue uh, bogus certificates uh, for Google.com uh, and Gmail.com and uh, then man, uh, in, man in the middle attacks on the uh, Iranian internet uh, gateways were uh, put in uh, interception proxies to steal, uh, intercept users' uh, email connections there. Um, it looked to them as though they were getting the ordinary secure uh, Gmail website. Uh, there was no way to tell that uh, their trust in uh, their certificate uh, system was misplaced. Uh, and this is a problem of scope because why is it that anyone, anywhere, can uh, issue a certificate for uh, any domain name? That there is uh, not a good way, uh, a dis good distributed way, for uh, domains to assert only uh, the uh, certificate authority I've authorized uh, can do that. Now, since then, uh, more of these mechanisms have uh, been developed and are being discussed. So Google in its Chrome uh, browser has certificate pinning and uh, will say uh, only uh, these certificates that uh, we have blessed should be used to uh, val validate the, uh, the, the Google websites. If you see any others, don't show a page because it's not Google. Uh, and that scales up to a few uh, uh, sites, so those who uh, contact Google at, at high risk can get their pins added uh, to, uh, to the browser, but uh, it doesn't scale globally. Other ideas like certificate transparency propose a public log of, uh, of all of the certificates issued that a company could then watch and repudiate. Uh, so if Google saw a fake certificate appear in one of those logs, uh, it could announce 
that's not ours and uh, send out blocking messages to warn people against uh, using that certificate and then the browser would uh, make sure it was only looking at certi certificates that were publicly logged. Um, but uh, for the moment, uh, most users and most browsers are still stuck with uh, this uh, uh, somewhat overbroad uh, scope of trust in certificate authorities. What about trusting governments? Surely they can help us to uh, maintain our uh, secure web environments. Uh, well, at least uh, English-speaking countries, the, the governments haven't been doing much to inspire trust lately. Uh, NSA, GCHQ, and their partners among the five eyes, um, as Edward Snowden have, has shown, uh, have done plenty to uh, cause us reasonable distrust from uh, sweeping communication surveillance, uh, subverting encryption standards, backdooring commercial software, uh, stockpiling vulnerabilities in software. Uh, instead of assuring communication security, as we would hope that uh, our uh, governments do, uh, they are making it less secure. And, uh, this is undermining the trust uh, both in our governments and uh, in companies who now find that uh, their business partners are concerned uh, about what this means for the security of their products and uh, what it means um, as well for their profits. Uh, so, can we, uh, can we improve the security of, uh, of web applications? Uh, web XKCD had a um, fun little cartoon the other day. Uh, installing things has gotten so fast and painless. Why not skip it entirely and make a phone that has every app installed already and just downloads and runs them on the fly? Uh, Felt pretty clever until I realized I'd invented web apps. Um, so, uh, almost, uh, but web apps still lack a couple of the key features of, uh, of offline applications. Uh, they rely on this web security model um, and uh, the same origin policies, and uh, in particular, ch uh, raise challenges around uh, secure JavaScript delivery. Whom does the user have to trust to know that what uh, the user is downloading from the web app uh, is in fact uh, secure and uh, safe to execute on their browser? And uh, can the user build uh, a true encrypt, uh, can the user uh, trust that uh, a web application is uh, what uh, he or she expected and meant to visit? And uh, if the user trusts that today, uh, does that trust necessarily carry forward? Uh, so uh, you might have trusted uh, Ladar Levinson, the man behind Love a bit, um, and you might have uh, trusted because uh, you saw the code or because you trusted him as an individual and believed that uh, the uh, email, uh, webmail communication system that he was uh, developing was uh, safe and sound and secure, but uh, if he can be sent a national security letter uh, by the US government and told, change that code and force your end users to download new code that is uh, less secure, that is backdoored, or that uses an encryption key that we have access to uh, so that uh, we, uh, U.S. government, uh, can gain access to those communications, uh, then uh, the user's trust would be misplaced, even if it uh, was originally entirely warranted. Uh, rather than take that route, rather than backdoor uh, users, uh, love a bit shut down, very publicly announced that it was uh, ceasing operations immediately uh, and destroying communications rather than uh, turn them over or 
uh, expose the users to uh, surveillance. Um, apparently, the, uh, the government wanted uh, information about a, a single user, uh, but thanks to encryption, couldn't find uh, that user, uh, and so asked to decrypt everything until you can find uh, the user and the communications uh, that we want. Well, as long as the users of a service are uh, constantly uh, asking for, uh, for web updates and, or willing to receive uh, web updates, they don't have a way of protecting themselves uh, against this kind of uh, Trojan update. Uh, so can we build uh, the tools that will allow users to, uh, to sec secure their systems better uh, against this kind of uh, attack? Because even if you trust uh, those with whom you're doing business, uh, if somebody else can interfere uh, with them, uh, your trust will be uh, misplaced. So I think we need to look at the web web security model um, and the web and look for ways of scoping trust more precisely. Uh, we want to look for uh, opportunities to say, you don't need to trust uh, everyone for everything, uh, but rather uh, need to trust uh, for a purpose and uh, for a specific reason. So can we uh, build these more uh, secure routes of trust uh, through uh, some combination of code, uh, perhaps of law and liability, uh, perhaps through distributed systems that allow you to look to others for verification of uh, the information that you're asked to trust rather than uh, to one central point that can be suborned. Uh, do we need new models and primitives to, to build uh, the web and uh, web applications upon? Um, and so here I've, I've got some thoughts and uh, we'll uh, share some of those. And uh, I'm also inviting you to sort of help, think of, help us think through these problems and help us build a, uh, a more secure and trustworthy uh, web environment. Uh, so transparency seems to be one of those uh, pieces. Uh, the uh, public logs and notaries, the Double checking of, uh, of information in public places makes it harder to, uh, to, to subvert, uh, harder to go back uh, and, uh, and change. Open source uh, allows for uh, many, many eyes, as they say. Doesn't guarantee security. If no eyes are actually looking at the code, uh, it can still be insecure and uh, still be vulnerable, as we've seen in a few uh, recent OpenSSL uh, incidents, uh, but uh, openness helps, free software helps. I know Richard Stallman was in here a few <laughs> minutes earlier. Uh, can we do more with signing and verification, uh, signing of so uh, source, uh, signing of channels? Uh, can we use distributed uh, mechanisms of trust? Uh, can we build on Open uh, is the web of trust, something like uh, what PGP uses, uh, something that scales. <laughs> and if not, how can we uh, build something that scales better than the rooted uh, and centralized mechanisms of, uh, of, of certificate authorities? Uh, can we do more with uh, pinning? And uh, we've seen the uh, certificate pinning from the server side. Uh, do we need, can we give users something similar of a code pinning in their browser so that uh, if the user decides at this point in time, I trust the web application that's been delivered, maybe because they've audited it, maybe because they've delegated to a friend uh, or uh, organization that they trust to audit it, uh, maybe because they built it themselves. Um, they trust it now, but don't want it to change out from under them. Can we make that easier to use than a separately installable in extension uh, so that uh, we can 
build uh, user secure web apps? Um, can we get uh, better uh, at key storage and key exchange uh, to spare users the uh, difficulties of key management or to explain key management in ways that, uh, that make sense uh, to uh, people who are trying to think about how to communicate securely? Uh, can we give uh, mechanisms for secure key storage, whether it's hardware, uh, two-factor authentication uh, that work for users to prevent uh, them from being attacked? And uh, can we think more about uh, capabilities and commitments in software? Can we think about limiting uh, capabilities uh, in places uh, to say, you don't need to trust us, me very far uh, with your data, with your computing environment, because uh, this particular application can't do very much. Uh, can we get, give users some uh, limited modular uh, applications that will uh, let them uh, build up uh, trusted components? And uh, so uh, I'm thinking about these pieces and uh, would love to, to, to get your thoughts and, uh, and help in what else, do we, what else does the web need uh, to become uh, a real powerful home for secure user-to-user -user communications, uh, for the trust that we need to build uh, commercial and social applications, and uh, keep this space uh, vibrant and uh, safe. Uh, so. Thanks very much, and I would welcome questions. Thanks for that. Uh, you were talking about code pinning and uh, user side code pinning or something. Like, honestly, how practical do you think this is? Because to me, it sounds completely uh, like un un unpractical. Uh, because the l smallest amount of like change in the code would require re-auditing on the user side or their friend, as you suggested, or and or we have to delegate it to some authority. Then that authority will delegate to another authority. So as a replacement for the CM model, you're creating another CM model for the codes. Which, which uh, if you could expand on that, please. <laughs> uh, so sure. H how how would uh, code pinning or work, uh, how can we improve uh, secure update of code um, so that uh, users can verify the, the, the security of what they've downloaded? Um, I, I, don't, I don't know <laughs> all the details, and you're right that, that there are plenty of uh, complexities, but the answer isn't, or I don't think, all the way to the other end of each time you run an application, uh, you're downloading bits and pieces from who knows where and, uh, and putting them together and, uh, and trusting that that combination uh, will be safe. Uh, so one uh, component of the answer is uh, to, to use, rely on libraries more and uh, be able to, to audit those libraries and then uh, the pieces on top uh, need, can be smaller and uh, more easily reviewed when they change. I would like to follow up on that. Um, the case I'm thinking about is the case of CryptoCat. When the, the case the, of what? The CryptoCat. CryptoCat, yes. Yeah, where there were questions about the, if the adversary was the dude himself who, 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 who created, the, or somebody who created the server. And then it was like, yeah, okay, make it an add-on. But then like, how can I trust the add-on? Then the, the add-on has auto-update, and then when I update, I have to look at it again. So I, I really don't think the concept of code pinning will ever work any time in the future, at, at least from what we know about IT. Well, thanks. I mean, so I, I'll, some similar questions come up if you look at the, the Google end-to-end -end encryption uh, extension uh, that, that they've offered. How do you, uh, Google says, uh, this code will offer you in-browser end-to-end, uh, user-to-user encryption. 
Um, if it's a Google supplied extension and Google can send updates to it, uh, then Google could also uh, either force or be forced to send an update that would uh, decrypt instead of encrypt and uh, send your data onward. Uh, so if you wanted to uh, avoid that possibility, uh, you could uh, take the, the code uh, to that extension, recompile it yourself, put, put on a sep your own signature, uh, and install it as a browser extension, and uh, avoid the, the, the possibility of, uh, up of, of centralized update. Uh, does that solve all the problems? <laughs> uh, no, but it, uh, it, it, it's in part a, a question of threat modeling and how do we help uh, to, to figure out which pieces we, uh, we can solve by what means. Thank you for your talk. Um, but I have an, no, no, but I, I have a question, maybe a remark. Um, I think trust is a social phenomenon. Trust will be established between parties, persons, organizations. And I think it's not clear how technology is a tool to achieve uh, such a goal like trust. It can be necessary to do that, but most users doesn't um, make the expectations of trust explicit in the world. We have never seen an advertisement, this website is more secure than the other ones because users expect that websites are secure and um, expect also that browsers and the operating systems work. I think we should not require from users to ask for uh, yeah, explicit solutions for the trust problem. <laughs> Yeah, so, so as to the, the, the social phenomenon, we see it I, somewhat, something of branding is uh, a way of trying to establish a reputation and then to, to maintain that reputation uh, for trustworthiness. Uh, so uh, if we sort of associate uh, security incidents with uh, the brand, uh, I'm sure people uh, are more reluctant to use their credit cards in a Target supermarket um, after uh, its point of sale terminals were uh, subject to an enormous breach than uh, they were beforehand. Um, and so that provides some incentive to the institutions to try to uh, up their security in order to earn trust. Um, and I hope that uh, we can use some of those uh, sort of social and uh, institutional pressures to uh, encourage better security practices uh, and uh, to build on that. Uh, and then uh, I think um, w there's a slightly different concept that we're talking about um, in security of, you know, why do I believe that this system will operate properly, keep my inf information confidential, um, and uh, do I have reason uh, b behind that belief? Well, I, um, I, I hope that uh, we, we've got an active web security uh, interest group and various uh, working groups uh, over at W3C looking at uh, these issues, the web application security group is, uh, is active and in discussing cores and uh, CSP and uh, various other uh, modules for se securing uh, web applications. Um, and uh, we are looking actively at uh, what else does the web need. So uh, please feel free to get in touch and uh, look forward to talking to you further. Thank you.